Okay, hi, I'm Paul, back with another episode of Plasma Cast, the show where we feature uh, professionals of the creative industry to get their insights. And today we have here my friend, Dr. Sam Okizam, who is Director of the International Mobility and Collaboration Center at USM. Uh, now, in spite of that, actually, why I'm getting here is because to get him to share his background as an architecture educator, okay, and the story of, you know, where you might get the idea to go into the field of architecture, how you get your skills, and either to do you know, mainstream consultation work or, in his case, education. Hey, Sam. Hey, Paul. How are you? I'm all very right. good. Yeah, I'm very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming mm. uh, all the way to USM today. So, uh, yeah, uh, as Paul rightly said, um, I'm now in education. Uh, I'm teaching uh, design, to say. Yeah. Um, Probably I'll kickstart way back a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. From I mean, from the earliest possible that you yeah. can tell. Her. Okay, um, I was uh, I was trained as an architect. Um, uh, uh, I was in the UK. I was Kent, mm -hmm. uh, University of Kent, Canterbury. Um, and um, over there, uh, I, I, when I went to the UK, it was I think it was ninety. Gosh, it was 1990, I think. It was 1990, so there goes my age. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, 1919, I was trained there. Um, and then I, um, uh, I, I worked in London for a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, in an architect firm. And, and then I went to do my part two. Um, mm -hmm. After that, um, I decided, um, as, as I was trained in the UK, uh, surprisingly in the UK, um, a lot of um, um, architects, uh, well, uh, uh, well, architecture graduates they 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 venture into a lot of other other stuff, mm -hmm. because I if you see um, in 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 the UK it's slightly a bit different. Uh, where over here probably a bit more streamlined when you start architecture, you concentrate on architecture. Over there, you you do have this so called transdisciplinary where you work with other areas as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you can work within the context of of, of history, for example, archaeology. This is still based in architecture, yeah. Okay. Um, you work with, for example, with uh, art artists uh, in terms of public art. Uh, you work with uh, urban designers. Um, um, you work with uh, fine artists. So this this is the, uh, the the exposure that I managed to get when I was in the UK. Okay. So now this exposure you just mentioned mm. is it a mat something that happened in you know in your studies that there were such opportunities for collaboration in the course or is it something that you know when you worked out started working professionally they say hey you know um this is what the expo what this is what the off industry can offer oh no no i mean a my university uh encourages for 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 um for us to work with um students uh of or to work with other programs right um in this instance i work with um a time-based media student or new media students right. um where they look at how um uh, architecture changes throughout the time uh, by using um, uh, by looking at uh, a different timeline of architecture and the importance of it and how how it impacted social inclusion. This was my first exposure uh, where architecture worked with um, within other areas. Um, also, when I was working um, in London at a time, um, I realized that um, I somehow had this 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 um, uh, accident, accidental. Um, uh, uh, love in a way that I, I I came across where architecture is being used to to brand a city. So graphic branding and somehow it intertwined with architecture and where uh, there's a group of us where we're trying to see what happened if we we take away certain elements, certain public art from the city, and how you cannot recognize the city. So you know, so, so for, 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 from that experience, I, I realized that um, architecture is not standalone. And and when I uh, apart from working um, in an architect firm, I also um, dabble a bit with my own. I, I did freelance and stuff like that. So again, I meet different kind of people with different kind of aspiration on how design should work. I, in a way, let me rephrase that: not just so much architecture, but how design should work as in. Because when you say architecture, there's other parts of design that you're looking at. So yeah, this is how. I mean, what you are alluding here is that uh, design as a field. The built environment is definitely is definitely architecture, exactly. and when we say that, people obviously you know the first thing obviously people think is building. But in your, uh, I mean, in your work, in your research, in your studies, it's different. It, it's more than know, that. It's just yeah, more the, than the building. Scale, you know, the scale keeps changing, and exactly. it works, and it exactly. sort of like provides a, a cumulative identity. Yeah, yeah. It's not so much of changing. It's what we call it as developing. You, you have to develop. 
Um, right. and, uh, even architecture is developed. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's not static. So it's it's the same thing when you when you're looking at. Um, I went into at some point um, in my PhD. I did on public art. Right. Um, so okay. I was looking at how uh, you use public art based on the group of friends I I I I I, I work with. Um, we looked at the element of public art in the city and how it um, enables the city to 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 have its own identity by um, by probably uh, incorporating public art work. Public art work is a big word. Like if I say let's take Penang, you have you have the art, for example. Um, we have murals, you have mm-hmm. sculptures, and that's what makes a city alive. Okay. Uh, so this is where. Uh, where I came in with my with my 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 PhD research, I was looking at public art and the crossover between within the arts and also architecture and also urban design. Right. Mm. Okay. So um, let me just uh, how say get into more detail about more in depth about PhD study. Mm. Okay. So your PhD is in public art. Right. Okay. Uh, but from my understanding is that okay. So you want to sorry, delve further into the academic side or at least the research side of architecture. And you, and how's it? There are things that perhaps need preparatory work, or like what idea may I want to explore, or what does the the institution can provide the support for my research? Mm, mm, so how? So for the beginning phases, okay. How do you um, prepare for the idea of I'm going to do research in PhD research? Right. Uh... Now, it, it might come as a surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not something I plan. Uh, okay. PhD is it's a strange animal, I think, PhD. Uh, people think that, yeah, you have PhD, you do a lot of research and stuff like that. But it all, it all started with, like I said, my, my PhD started with a group of friends, a bunch of friends who was a bit curious about stuff. And, and, and from there, we, we, we did some research. These are not like structured research, like PhD research. But slowly, I fell in love with that research component part. Right. Yeah, where you know, if you want to know something, where you know, you 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 must have certain method to get the, your answers, um, mm. so that it's not it's not um, biased uh, towards certain ideals, or it's not uh, skewed to 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 probably what you think you want. Then because it's, it's to be impartial. That's why I love that research, and and when I did. When I decided to do my PhD, uh, I was actually uh, working for Birmingham uh, City University as a as a as a lecturer, mm-hmm. and I decided that um, yeah, um, let's look at research um, and I said let's challenge myself a little bit more. See, mm-hmm. how, how I mean, if people can do it, I mean, let I mean, what if you know? So that's when I started to go into PhD. It's an unplanned uh, thing. It's not that I want to go into into academics per se. I was in 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 in, uh, in uh, education industry right. uh, after a while mm-hmm. um, because, like I said, I fell in love with the teaching part, but also being able to do the research part. Uh, then this PhD came along. Um, I have to be honest, it came along. I decided, okay. Um, but one thing good about about uh, my university um, at that time, uh, they prepared us for research. We had to go undergo a research. Uh, um, Postgraduate research uh, program where you learn to look at uh, research methods. Uh, you learn to look at um, how to write, for example, which which is important in in in, in research. And and thankfully, when I decided to uh, head back to Malaysia, um, USM opened it door, its doors to me. So here I am. Okay. So the pro- So as far as the journey so far, it's uh, you know you work professionally and. Maybe one one night that you decide, hey, you know, let's uh, yeah. delve into such ideas of yeah. uh, public art. Right. Uh, and so it was very cool. incidental. Is probably not the best term, <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, probably you know it's something that sparked your interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and you just ran, and then you just yeah. uh, built upon. Uh, how can I pursue it further? Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like I said, um, uh, it was based on a bunch of fan, and we wanted to know something. We did the research part. Um, the PhD is the one that research has always been. Uh, research has been uh, one of well, I can't say my interest, but then again, it's one of the things you you uh, you you uh, decided to uh, uh, to do. I, I don't know when I, when I did when we wanted to, do, to understand some things, we started to do research, and I I, I fell in love with that research part yeah. where the the PhD part. Is what I think uh, that came later on. Not research part is not research part. Is yeah, I mean, research, quite planned. I mean, what I've heard is that people 
I know some people they do research independently. Correct. And PhD is probably just a form of being able to recognize your. Correct. Your, it's a translation that, of that yep. example. Yeah, yeah. To recognize or at least uh, put a you know put a value to your achievement. Correct. Well, well, if you maybe, look it maybe. that way, yeah. yeah. If you look at that way, but again, if you're gonna do a PhD. Don't start, don't kickstart your PhD with the idea that I want to get that doctor sign in, in the front. In the okay. Front. That's, a, that's definitely a wrong move. Okay. If you, if you think that, okay, I want to do PhD because I want to get that doctor title, mm-hmm. then you are off uh, from the uh, wrong Let's foot because wrong from, start. Yeah, yeah from, from, the from the bachelor's on. No, I see. Because if you want to do it, it's just because I, I did, did my PhD because I was passionate about research. Mm-hmm. I want to know about something and I'll see how far I can go with it. Right. But um, I have, uh, for example, met a few people who, who did a PhD just because, i.e., they managed to get a uh, secure scholarship. And one of the requirements of scholarship is they must complete yeah. their PhD. Mm-hmm. And those who wanted to do PhD just because. And I find them to be quite, for the lack of a better word, miserable people in a way. Because you know why? They, okay. they, they, they look miserable in a way. I don't know. It's just probably my point of view. They look miserable. But when you are doing... Because you need to sustain yourself when, you, when you're doing a PhD, when you're doing research. Because for a long period of time, mm-hmm. um, you need to be able to sustain your, your spirit to do this research. Because there will be setbacks. A um, uh, few things will, 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 will sort of like... Uh, will dishearten you from continuing your PhD. There will be moments like that. Uh, I used to remember when I, I went in uh, to see my supervisor, uh, Professor Nick Stanley, um, and he, he was also the advisor for the, um, the British Museum. Right. Um, very good man, but he's very strict. So it feels that every time I see him, um, after I, 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 I did my, uh, my, uh, had my consultation, came out from his office, it was raining. And because my heart was reading as well, and it was reading outside. Because it was sometimes, you know, you do a lot, you put a lot of efforts and your heart into it, and you realize that you're not on the right track. So you had to, like, again, put you back on the right track. So that can be, you know, you didn't, you've done a lot of work. This is this, this one thing about research that probably before I didn't know uh, where the methods come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, you must validate each step and process of your, your, your research work. Not just, I'm doing research, this is going to be the method I want to use, because I want to use it just because... Um, my friend says so. You know, it, you know, you have to have your your theoretical framework, your conceptual framework, so that again, um, your finding uh, is um, what we call it as 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 true as it can be, right. yeah, as as clear as it can be. Mm-hmm. So no influences from 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 probably your own personal uh, your own personal likings or whatnot. So these are the things that you must understand when you're doing PhD. But saying that, it is a rewarding um, experience. For those who are into um, education or who wanted to be an academic, um, I think you should pursue your PhD because it is just after you complete your PhD, you just feel it's just all lovely, seriously. Because mm-hmm. you know what, you manage to uh, to 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 get to the point of your life. You realize, yeah, this is gonna be one of the toughest um, um, part of my life. I'm trying to complete my PhD, but I've done it. I managed to do it, and I've I've been rewarded. Knowing the fact that I've completed my PhD, not so much of the, the doctor thing like that, that 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 title comes with it, but it's fine, because, but the reward is, is is knowing that you've done it. You know, you've managed to push yourself a, a little bit further. Okay, no, no, very good. Okay, so, no one, so that, uh, you know, you got your qualifications and you probably proceed to continue education. I mean, ed, you know, continue in in UK for a while longer. Mm. So how? You know, what made you the decision to come back to Malaysia and be the educator here? Okay. Uh, what, 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 what factors or what influences? I don't know, I don't know whether you're going to like my answer, but you know... Being, it's for the audience. Uh, being Asian, whether you like it or not, you have Asian parents. And parents always say that they have this emotion, this uh, what call it, emotional blackmail. I don't know <laughs> the right, right thing. And goes that if, if I die, you don't have to come back. It's okay. It's okay. That is just a, that's a telltale sign that, you know, it's a sign for you to come back. <laughs> but apart from that, um, I just think that it, it doesn't matter where you're at. All um, right. You can be in the UK, but you can be in Malaysia, you can be in Singapore, wherever it is. Um, the research or being, being, being uh, an educator or an academ- academics in, in any of this country, uh, what is important is you anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether how well, how, I mean, uh, whether you have the passion to be uh, 
and academics or if you want to do that then by all means you can go anywhere it doesn't matter because when I was in the UK I used to teach in Bangkok and Hong Kong as well mm -hmm. uh, as part of the because this this university IVE in Hong Kong and also Silpa Silpa International in Bangkok uh, they actually um, they work with uh, Birmingham City University and run their programs. So I need to go there and teach as well to, to also monitor the program. So like I said, it doesn't matter where you're at. Um, as long as you have the passion with you, you enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I often realize that when I teach, whenever I'm stressed out, whenever I teach, for example, I feel a lot less. The pressure is, is, is off me. For some reason, I do not know why. Again, then again, probably it's just down to passion, being able to see young minds. And you're able to challenge young minds to, to probably to be better than you. Right. That, that's the idea anyway. So, uh, and in my class, I, I always have this idea that I'm not your teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not your lecturer. Uh, I'm actually uh, just someone who wants to work with you. That's why in my classroom, I don't have my classroom arrangement like a normal classroom. Yeah, the, you know, the, the, the I'm, I'm the front. No, no, right. I don't do that. I, I usually have my classroom either I sit I, I'll sit them in in, in, a, in a big circle or we sit on the floor okay or sometimes we have our classes outside right um, just because I, I don't want them to feel that because of, often like when you're standing right in front of the students and you're teaching them and they think that ah, you're the teacher so well, the Asian students Asian kids they usually okay he's the teacher and he's the stage just sit there and listen and, 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 and do not open your mouth. You yeah, know? The, it's sort of like the somewhat commanding presence that the structure of the space. Exactly. And uh, and also maybe because of the culture that kind of this barrier, you know, whether it's... I mean, there's a bit of a barrier. It creates maybe a barrier to exploration. Correct. Correct. Right. I mean, yeah, I agree. Um, this is the thing that I realized that uh, a while back when I was teaching in the UK, so I realized this, that... Uh, um, you have to treat um, the students or your students um, as 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 a person rather than as a student student per se, mm -hmm. because they 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 are actually I call them as half professionals anyway because you know they have the they they have the thirst for uh, to understand certain things uh, within the area in this sense design, so then why do you treat them like small kids you know don't don't treat them like small kids and and I have to admit I do not know everything, so I. Uh, um, I, I find I find it uh, most times um, when I um, give them um, uh, classroom assignment. Usually I like classroom assignment. Then take away take home assignment that they have to venture around. And and often they, when when they came back to present their finding, you know it's something new. I've learned something from them. You know I managed to learn a lot from them actually. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a two way. It's, it's a two way. Two, two, uh, what again? A two way street. So, so this is why that this is why I think I enjoy a lot because then again it helps to fit into my research as well. When I'm doing research, you know, I remember you know these are some of the findings that my student managed to to uncover. So, it's kind of refreshing because you're not the only one who who's who's with the knowledge. They they have the knowledge as well because the way the way they see things are different. You'd be surprised at the new ideas that they have. Hmm. Yeah. Which I find it really fabulous anyway. Oh, very interesting, very interesting. Okay, yeah. um, perhaps, uh, okay, so you've been here, you know, for almost 10 years now? Eight, eight years plus. Eight years yeah. plus. And besides, you know, academics in terms of the education administration, you've also uh, been involved in some projects externally. Yes, I have, uh, I have. Do you mind talking a bit about that? Sure. Um, basically, um, when I first came back to, again, uh, I'll go back just a little bit back. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first came back to Malaysia, um, before coming to Penang, um, I, I, my cousin and I, my cousin and I, he's also an architect. Uh, but luckily, he's a part three architect. So, right. um, and we work with him. I work with him uh, with, with uh, several projects. Um, I did at one point bid for a uh, so-called regeneration project at the Putrajaya. At that point, um, if I was not mistaken, it was two thousand and um, let me see, twelve or. 13, uh, 14, where you put a bit, how to, how can you re regenerate Putrajaya? Because at the moment, if you look at Putrajaya, I know it's an administrative city, but it's a bit dry. So I think there, 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 there was a call uh, for uh, designers, urban designers, architects, even for artists to come in, how that you can allow for uh, a lively activity apart from that 9 to 5, then how do you get people to come to Putrajaya? Because Putrajaya is such a beautiful city, a well-planned city. Uh, but unfortunately, it's a really dry, yeah. dry, dry I city. I mean, it seems to be a fairly typical curse of such cities. Exactly. Like even 
like uh, in terms of architecture history, notable cases include like uh, Brasilia yeah. and uh, Canberra. Canberra, yeah. yeah. And you, you must understand um, the idea of um, Putrajaya. Um, Putrajaya is actually a utopian uh, city, an, an ideal of a utopian city. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Kuala Lumpur is heterotopia. Heterotopia means it's layers and layers and layers of different kind of culture that built the city. Yep. So you have a, a rather organic and fluid city, Kuala yep. Lumpur. Yes, you have different architecture, different kind of activities, economic activities, uh, different kind of people. And, you know, uh, we have migrants, we have uh, 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 rural migrants, and, and then migrants from other countries that make up Kuala Lumpur, yeah, because and, I, you remember, right? Kuala yeah, Lumpur and then from, the visitor, and then the transient, and then the transients, and even the residents. So exactly, all that. exactly. Where else, Putrajaya is a city, uh, it was built based on a specific plan. Yep. Okay. To make sure the administrative arm of the country is is felt. This is what Putrajaya is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a utopian city. It was built based on an idea uh, to make sure that... Um, I'm not saying it's not fluid, but in, it's it's in, in it's rigid in a way because again it's it's a it's a it's a set plan. What's going to happen for the next five years, ten years, fifteen years, thirty years? Yeah. So it means that this is what they wanted, and because of that, um, the if I may say, the downfall of being utopian is just that it's based on an ideal, mm -hmm. a specific ideal. So it it it, it doesn't allow for. Um, the uh, organic growth of the city, uh, which is can be good in a way if you want it to be a white elephant city, because that's what you, if you plan it to be that way. Or, but if you want a bit more life, then you have to allow for some part of the city to to grow as as is. You know, yeah. um, the spur of the moment, what's going to happen, the, the kind of activities that's happening. So I think um, uh, at that time, the now opposition party, uh, back then was the government, now the opposition party. They had this idea of you know um, of of making Putrajaya you know uh, a big city, an idea of a big city, clean city and whatnot, very efficient and whatnot. Uh, but now, uh, even even then, they realized that no, um, we need to make sure that uh, Putrajaya is not a waste. Um, so usually after after five or after seven or eight, it's it's a dead city. So yeah, yeah. they don't they do not want that. So now, if you look, uh, they had events like the hot 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 air balloon, hot air balloon, and all this kind of stuff. These are some of the very very um, uh, 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 quick fix solution to allow people to come to Putrajaya more and more. But the idea that I had was when I was working on the Putrajaya Putrajaya um, uh, project, my, my my proposal is to allow for public art to come in. Uh, again, it's based on my passion and background on public art. Where you invite local artists, um, or even you dedicate certain areas for uh, artists to come and go and 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 probably put their 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 trademark and their artwork there, and to allow for more public parks, for example, with more activities, mm -hmm. uh, even as 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 such to have a flea market, for example, you have dedicated area for flea markets. Um, you also have community areas where you know I can just. Um, there will be uh, food trucks or benches and whatnot. Uh, these are some of the ideas that I have. I would indulge in, in the in the bigger idea, but we, we wanted to have that that organic feeling where um, the city actually evolves because of the people in it. Uh, so now at the moment, um, the people uh, is following the city. Right. Yeah. It's following what the, what 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 the, what the city wants. Mm -hmm. But if you looked at a very conducive kind of or good city or big city or lively city. They have to actually look at the community or, 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 or the people's activity. Then you have to build from there. So this happened because um, I did um, um, look at or uh, work with uh, PACA at the time when I was in the UK, Public Art Commission Agency in right. Birmingham, where they work on regeneration projects. Again, yeah, it's based on the people's activity that allows the city to flourish. So these are the things I'm trying to incorporate within Putrajaya itself. But unfortunately, I didn't get the project. Oh, you didn't get the project. I didn't get the okay. Project. Now, because uh, I mean, what you've said is, again, you know, what you've said in terms of, uh, you know, the city is not just the physical identity of the spaces and buildings, but also definitely more the cultural identity of the inhabitants. Of course. And you know, I mean, for me, I've read on this a bit, and it somehow always alludes back to Jane Jacobs' book in the 1930s, you know, where mm. in a way it's so, like, it's such an obvious idea that still stands. And somehow, you know, as 
as a uh, you know architects or planners, we're still making these type of uh, ideas or, or you know, yeah. as you say, utopian, yeah. uh, utopian ideas that you know they work efficiently in their core objective. Correct. But then, but that's, that's, yeah. yeah. Then what else? You know, that's a, it, it becomes exactly. a yeah, it becomes a bit of a challenge next. Exactly. Exactly. Like I said. Um, it, that is that is the the, the probably that is the, the restriction with working with uh, a fixed European ideal. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't know. Probably um, um, the uh, at that time I think it was Tun Ma, Tun Made who was actually who uh, wanted Putrajaya. Yeah. Uh, I still remember to be a highly efficient city with uh, fiber optics and whatnot. All yeah. That. Yeah. But uh, at the uh, at, but now, now as you as, as you see now. Um, Putrajaya is slightly livelier, yeah. uh, with a bit more uh, people on there. But still, I just I just feel that you know you don't you don't have to spend a lot of money. Again, it's just simple idea. Um, if you come if you come if you look at Penang, right, with some of the public artwork that you get alongside small streets, suddenly you have small businesses coming up. Yeah, just a table, a stall selling souvenirs. This is the kind of idea that we want to incorporate. You want it to be a lively city. You have to understand the people. You have to understand. Uh, their needs and their wants and you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's also a question of uh, you know, culture sustains itself as Correct. long as it propagates, exactly. it propagates itself. So, on the one hand, you know, a big event as you you know as you mentioned, the hot air balloon festival in Putrajaya, you know, is a very bold, you know, big and bold large scale yeah. statement. But at the same time, it's not this you know, it's, it's, a, quick it's a question of whether it's a quick fix. Yeah. It's just just that's it. You know, you don't have any more of those uh, events, and what happened? And that's it. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, best thing is just a best example of um, a, a, a not sustainable project. If you look at the for the F one, right? What's happening to Sepang at the moment? You know, you don't see. It. Yeah, they. I had. I think it was in two thousand sixteen that yeah. they saw so like you know said we are having the you know the F one will be having the last of their races and that. Correct. Right. Exactly. That's what I mean. You know, this again. If you if you're just so um, set on having specific role of the place. I mean, the place you can do a lot of stuff with the F1 um, uh, 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 track, for example. Yeah? So there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do. I mean, as as a, as a designer, I think I think we do have a lot of ideas. Um, the other one I liked, um, like uh, the idea of, I, I spoke to um, Ng Sek San. I also, oh, Sek -san, I, yeah, yes. Sek San, yeah. I also, um, as uh, two years back, I was working with um, on a res on a project research project with Academy Science Malaysia mm -hmm. uh, on the Mega Science 3.0 project, uh, Malaysian under dawn 2050. Because now we are reaching 2020, so we need to have a plan, at least enough time, ample time for us to plan what's going to happen in uh, with the design industry in Malaysia. So I work with Academy Science Malaysia to do a research project. I lead the we call it functional creation uh, sector where we look at architecture, interior design, graphic design, fashion design, and all the design elements uh, under the UNTACD, UNTAC, uh, definition of creative industry. Um, and where they divide it into two, one is design, one is services, but per se it's just design, where, where they say that it's so important for design to look at investing um, the idea of how design should work in the next 35 years and the creative industry should work in the, in, in the next 35 years so you have time to plan for it. And I and these are some of other projects that, like I said, I work with apart from uh, Putrajaya project. And to realize that this are the thing, if I say now, um, in, 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 my, in, my, in my report uh, to Academy Science Malaysia uh, that you know, the, the creative industry, the art and design architecture uh, needs to be able to not just move the trend, but allow for certain kind of fluidity within that, 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 the, 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 um, the design um, sector. So that, you know, this allow for people like you and I to come in at any time and, you know, uh, make changes because this thing will change anyway. So that's what I kind of like about, about that. But anyway. Okay, um, just to be, for a bit more clarity, when you say fluidity, okay, uh, what exactly do you mean? Because, um, you know, like most, you know, like design architecture, it's still very technical fields. So there is a lot of um, procedures or or you know even laws and rules to adhere to to define you know that that shapes the work, mm. you know, that that forms part of the effort to shape the work. So what do you mean by fluidity? Is it the you know the idea, the capacity to gain ideas or the capacity to 
to work within parameters or yeah I, um, it's we do have te the technicality and whatnot that's fine mm -hmm. um, I'm not questioning that I'm looking at probably the parameter of architecture itself um, also also the idea of um, um, the, the fluidity as in um, how far you can actually take this um, and how far architecture or design can change mm -hmm. uh, it means that um, yes you can have your technical uh, part of the, the architecture but you also have the creative part of your for, for architecture where like I said taking example from Putrajaya is very very technical it's very very uh, goal oriented that you re you do not realize the some 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 point where you know um, the architecture will have to work with different areas for example uh, we'll have to work with um, uh, uh, have to push the boundaries and whatnot beyond that kind of idea of, of what architecture is all about so that's what I meant by you know uh, ideas, even ideas, uh, way, ways of working, ways of doing, um, uh, uh, people you work with, areas that you work with, this kind of stuff. That's what I meant by that. So in other words, uh, so maybe uh, the ideas of using our tech, the, the design skills, you know, would, but it's not limited to our field, uh, our nominated exactly. field. Exactly. Uh, so it's design. Maybe it's designing a new, uh, you know, community or new service that kind of exactly. thing. All right, exactly. All right. Okay. So. You've been okay. So we've covered from your early days, you know, from professional who got into research, and your you know your 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 current uh, say, your current work, which is education, and also you know continuing mm. further research, and also some of your external initiatives. So, for you personally, looking forward, or maybe as a as an industry, uh, looking forward, if alluded to okay, these are some ideas that are shaping. But what about you personally, how do you view uh, either design or perhaps yourself in education? You know the the the, the landscape of education mm -hmm. in the future. In uh, okay, um, whether you we like it or not, mm -hmm. the four IR is upon us anyway. Uh, fourth industrial revolution. Okay. okay, a lot of destructive technology and whatnot. So uh, in even in in academics, uh, we do, we realize that, and we realize that. In the future, architect is not going to be just architects. No, yeah, probably not. We realize that, and that will change. Uh, now I can just download a, uh, I can just download a floor plan, for example. I can download an apps to probably rearrange furniture, furniture within, and, and I call myself a designer. Yeah. So these are the things that even in, in, in education we realize that we realize that we need to be able to make a lot of changes within how we see um, education. How do we see the practice itself? So. Um, I, I I'm I'm also I I also believe that in the future, uh, there might not be any more architects. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's far fetched, but again, there might be not architects because, like I said, people can just download stuff. Then, so why 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 is there a need for architects? Probably you need uh maybe you know you have to look see what's the future in architecture. Probably you you can see that. Then again, can you be an architect that write those kind of software? To allow people to be able to use it without being architect being there, so that's where probably you, your fees comes in, you know. So instead of actually, so you get royalty from the software, yeah. maybe yeah. So architects become an architecture software designer, for example, or uh, for example, uh, maybe you're looking at uh, maybe uh, uh, in 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 the future, you know. Now we have seven billion people, it'll be ten billion people. So you're looking at you know maybe um, uh, everything is micro now. So maybe you're looking at um, uh, an architect looking at uh, how do you design compact places where then again you have to look at technology, you have to turn to technology, maybe uh, VR and whatnot. So you have a small house, but with the VR, it, ma it makes it feel like you're living in a bungalow. So uh, again, the, the idea of you know being an architect, being a designer in the future is so somewhat going to be uh, insecure. I mean, it, it, it will change. Whether you like it, it will change. The demand will be different. Uh, maybe... Um, in the next 50 years, for example, um, you know, there'll be not enough, um, people will not have enough money to even hire an architect. So uh, in, 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 in education, we are looking at now, what, what I'm doing now with the school and the university, we're looking at then how do we look at um, enhancing experience and whatnot. So now we came out with this program called Micro Credential where you can be an architect, but you want to upgrade your uh, knowledge within different areas. So you can take, pick and mix. Um, it's like um, a jukebox. Mm -hmm. You know, can pick and mix the kind of songs that you want. 
So same thing, you know, even Michael Kardashian, you can, you want, you're an architect, but you want to go into history, for example, or you want to go into fine art, you want to go into um, medicine where you're very niche, for example, you're an architect looking at just healthcare. looking at healthcare. Mm. So you, you can pick up. So even education, we're preparing for that already now. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, like I said, in the future, uh, a lot, lot could happen. It might be zombie attack. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a firm <laughs> believer of zombie attack. It's not whether whether if it's when uh, you know uh, you can think anything about me, but obviously it's gonna happen anyway. Uh, jokes aside, um, um, yeah, these are the things. Uh, we, we, I mean, as uh, 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 in the um, education industries are thinking, are thinking of actually, we're doing that now, and also to allow for, for example, now I'm in Malaysia, and I want to experience, for example, uh, education in France or in France or in the UK, for example, without without leaving the shores. Yeah. So these are the things also we are looking at into how we can work with partners, universities, and looking into um, uh, probably um, VR and whatnot in, in terms of uh, being in a different classroom, different environment. Yeah, definitely yeah. something that is uh, perhaps an offshoot uh, of telecom, you know, the modern telecommunication Correct. revolution. Right. Right. Okay, so um, okay, so probably you know we cover a lot. We cover a lot. Um, so what I will do now is I'll cover. You know, what I have is my three questions, you know, the footnote of the show. And my three questions, which, you know, hopefully you'll give your insight. That's scary. It sounds scary, though. No, 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 no. Okay. It's basically, so for, so my three questions is simply about, you know, how does one come into the professional field? So the first question is, okay, for those who are um, considering the mm. idea of design or architecture as a field mm. or even uh, design education for, Design education, what advice might you have for them? Don't do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, I mean, I think often you hear that you have to have passion for it. You have to have passion for it. But I don't believe that. Uh, yes, you have some passion. Maybe you have some interest. It's mm -hmm. good enough. I think when it comes to um, design or architecture, uh, actually, that's a rather hard question, actually. Because... Um, for me, for those who are really into design, uh, number one, um, I think you have to have you have to have you have to have an idea what design is all about in the first okay. place. Okay, uh, a lot of the time people romanticize what being an architect or being a designer is all about. You know, like those TVs or movies saying, "Oh, you know, a designer, you'll be rich, you'll be driving nice cars, and stuff like that." But and it's far from the truth. So I think what will carry you forward is number one is you must have an understanding the demand. Of or the responsibility of a designer. Actually, we designers and architects carry a huge responsibility. Now, people might think it's doctors. I don't. I disagree. People say engineer. I disagree because I think without architects, doctors would not have uh, old operation theater to operate in. Um, and uh, without 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 architects, you know, engineer would not have any um, calculation work to do anyway. Because you know, okay. we come with all these crazy ideas. And number one is of course knowledge is king. So make sure that you understand. You, you know what you are getting yourself into. Uh, because it is actually, and, and, and hopefully, you will be able to pick up okay. your passion or your interest after that. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, for the second question is for those who are, you know, for those who are getting into, the, into this, like, you know, where they're looking out to develop, gain or develop the skills, uh, what advice might you have for them? Uh, you got to repeat that again in an in easier... Okay. So, we've gone from the idea. We've gone from the idea... Right. Now we want to find out, okay, how do I start? How do I take my first steps into this? Okay. You know, where, how do I gain my skill? How do I, uh, you know, research what I can do? Okay. Um, there's always a saying that, you know, how do you get to uh, Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Anyway, it's really... Uh, I think if, you really are, if you're really interested um, in, in, in design and architecture, uh, number one, do a lot of readings. Mm -hmm. uh, prepare yourself for... Um, uh, again, I, when I was when I was when I was um, younger, I, I read a lot. Um, I look a lot of magazines. A lot. I read a lot of uh, of, of uh, design 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 um, uh, articles and uh, even books. Yeah, just picture book, of architecture. And 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 because of that, um, then I decided to take up uh, drawing classes. Simple as drawing classes. You be you be surprised without the skills. Um, yes, you can have a good architect with. Uh, I've seen, I, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen um, um, this architect, uh, not Kalashava, you know, very, you know, his, his sketch is not that good. 
um, but yeah, and Frank Gehry. <laughs> Fra- oh, uh, yeah, um, and 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 and. But yeah, you know, he has really good idea. But it will help for you to uh, maybe take um, art classes. Mm-hmm. That's one of my preparation. And then um, secondly, I think um, I do I do um, a lot a lot of um, well. I don't know what you call it, reading, skimming yeah. through picture books, you know, of, of interiors and whatnot. You know. I mean, so, whether it's picture books, I mean, for me, I was uh, engineering. You know, there was these books where there was like engineering, yeah. uh, sort of like, you know, your planes and then you had your cutaway drawings. Now, that was what uh, interest, yeah. you know, that was what perked my interest. The, the other one um, helps me for some reason was Lego. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I was, I, I, I remember that was my first, first experience was Lego. My dad bought me Lego set. Um, it was not like today. Today you can get like you know very specific kind of. Yeah. Those days was just Lego, just Lego yeah. block. So those one one of those ideas was I was trying to to attach how how far I can get with the structure, you know, to get how 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 wide I can get it, you know. That was one of my first my first experience with. Uh, 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 just put all the pieces in the exactly. single line and, and, see and, and, how, and how far I can actually have it. Um, uh, how far how far stretch I can have it without any other support and how tall I can build. Mm. Is uh, stack up the, the Lego. That was my first experience. Then I, I actually ex- experimented and with design and stuff like that. So it was crazy. And it was young. So I keep asking my dad to buy more and more. And Lego <laughs> block was that was not it was not thin. Yeah, it was, the, it was quite yeah. blocky, it's quite big. So I remember that. That was my first experience. Um, so you can start with that. You can just see even uh, you know um whether you're whether you can do that. And you, you can like now and if you go to Borders, you can buy, um this um. Aluminum uh, laser cut of uh, yeah, you yeah. do buildings and whatnot. So you yeah, can just like, see whether whether that's part of what what you like. If you don't like it, you know, if you don't have the passion for it, or the patience for it, then probably probably yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's, it if it's not anyway. you, how say some things you know the interest will, will spark in you, and some things you know maybe some you know, yeah. it's maybe it's not for you and something else. Yeah, I remember as well when I was in my first year, my foundation year, I was in the UK. Um, um, when I joined architecture, it was six months, and my 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 first teach my first lecture was from Scotland, and his English was terrible. You know, it was not English, and I was there. I was only about eight, seventeen, eighteen at the time. You know, um, a different country away from my parents, um, and it was quite miserable, what not. But uh, what kept me going was the the art classes. You know, you have models and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. So that that kept me going. So I think maybe if you have the skill, uh, it'll be it will help that that, that transition learning learning about architecture. Because remember, architecture is not just about drawings and whatnot. You have to study your physics as well. You have to know your physics, your your, math, your mathematics as well. Because yeah. you have all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the final question is for someone who is uh you know for for someone who's starting up professionally, okay, what advice might you have them? Might might. Uh. Again, um, it's a very tough question for me because again, each and every one of us have our own. Yeah, that's you know, fine. Ways I mean, that, that's the purpose of this show. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm still thinking. I, 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 it's quite difficult for me to actually say because then it would be very personal to me. Um, um, I, I, I think uh, what is important is. Um, it's hard to know what's going to happen in the next five to ten years in your life. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, my style is, I whatever I do, uh, I take I take one step uh, one step at a time, and I I really uh, um, get involved at a spur of the moment, and I but when I'm doing that, I really put my my, my heart and soul to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, and I and. I, I, I never do things, for example, okay, um, as, 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 a, as an architect or as a designer, I, I never say that you know, I'm working towards this because I want to achieve this. Uh, but I'm loving this now. I'm going to be really good at it. I'm going to do, I'm going to put all my heart into it. And from there, hopefully I'll be really good at it. So then it will take me to where I want to go. So wherever that is. I don't know whether that's the right answer that you want to hear, but as a professional, uh, not every professional has things planned, you mm-hmm. know, or or whatnot. I, I my mine is based on probably spur of the moment what I really like and I do it and I just really uh, push myself as far as I pos- possibly can go. I don't know whether that answers your question. No, no, that's fine. Be... I mean, for I mean the purpose of this show is to you know accumulate stories and see you know to the audience that whether they be inspired or whether they at least you know to the minimum is they understand what 
are the challenges that you know that they ex- that they might experience? I, I, okay, I think I'll just uh, end, end with this. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest challenge is yourself. All right. Um, being being a design architect has always been that um, because uh, you might at some point in your life you just might say that no, no longer interests me. Okay, but when you say when it comes to the point where you say it no longer interests me, don't stop. It means that you don't probably you're 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 tired of of for example buildings and whatnot. So you channel it somewhere else. There's a lot of design areas. This is one thing beautiful about design. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I talk about design per se, um, if you're tired of architecture, go into urban design. If you're tired of that, you go into city branding and whatnot. So there's avenues and ways. So don't give up just like that. Just just don't up and leave. Uh, that's my my advice would say that. But like I said, the biggest obstacle, the biggest problem will be you and yourself. Uh, of retaining what you love and what you want because sometimes passion can only go so much it yeah, can only yeah. take you so far so when it comes to putting uh, bread on the table then you realise that okay sometimes I have to do things I do not like so but then again uh, you might do it once or twice but I don't think you can do it more than that so this is where you have you must you're, you're able to diversify mm-hmm. um, whatever that you have your talent to something else okay alright okay so that's the well that's towards the end of the show um, is there anything, any last words you want to add for our audience? Uh, you know, any final words or advice or w- words of wisdom or even a shameless plug to say, hey, you know, come to USM. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be <laughs> shameless as that. Yeah. Um, I think um, our school of uh, architecture is one of the best schools in the country. Um, and please do come. Mm. Um, and you, you'll see we, we do, we do um, well, turn out a lot of great architects and whatnot. Um, so do come to USM, uh, or just check us out. Come and um, we have we have our design school here. We have our architecture school here. So you have you your spot for choices anyway. Just do come to USM and and um, stay creative. Um, I mean, in life you have to be anyway. Otherwise, you'll die. If you don't stay creative, you don't keep moving, you'll die. And so I know it's very macabre. But then... <laughs> All right. Okay. So with that, we conclude our you know our interview. Uh, my name is Paul. You're watching Plasma Cast. Uh, click subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment, leave a like. It helps the show. And also, if you want to know more about uh, Dr. Sam or USM, there will be links at the end in a few seconds of, you know, as the show closes. So, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, oh, Sam, thank you very much. No, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you okay. for coming. Thank you.